I'm so excited this morning. And honestly, I was hoping that I would come on here with better news, thinking that things were, you know, as good as they could be. Um, but no, you know me, never easy, is it? Basically, the upshot is that um, they got the tumour out and they got all of it out. They got a clear margin of um, tissue around it. Um, but they took five lymph nodes from under my arm here and one of the five was cancerous. Um, and the danger you have then is basically that the lymph nodes transport it through your body where it goes to your other organs. So they just don't know whether any others would have been affected. There's no way of telling until they take them out and they're looked at in a lab. Because there is what they called um, lymph node activity. The plan now is that I have to have chemotherapy again. Which I'm being strong talking about, but I am absolutely gutted. I know it's for the right reasons to, you know, make sure they get it all, but you know, it's the hair thing. Just sick. And cancer robbing me of things in life. So I'll have five months of that. It's gonna be a tough, what, seven months at least, isn't it? Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If it's the first time you've joined me, thank you for watching and welcome. Welcome to my little channel. This is really the second part of um, this particular series if you want to call it of videos um i posted the first one back in october um so we're now just over six months later and i thought it was time for a little catch-up as you know or as you will have seen from the footage at the beginning of this video um, I was diagnosed with breast cancer um, for the second time last year and I had intended to sort of document the, and I hate the word journey, but the duration, is that a better word? The duration of the treatment um, to share it kind of with you and I started doing that but then um, I just didn't have, I just didn't have the energy, to be honest. Um, I kept thinking, right, next time I will film after chemo, just so I can let people know what it's actually like. Um, and don't get me wrong, I think I took it quite well. Uh, my consultant the other day when he rang me said I was a model, <laughs> model patient because um, my side effects were controlled, basically. Uh, it's not been easy, I'm not gonna lie. Um, people kind of think, oh, well, you look well. Um, you know, they, they see me looking okay in photos or they saw me looking okay in photos throughout. You don't share all of it, you know. I only sort of shared photos of the good bits or the good days, should I say. Um, I kept my hair because I used the cold cap um, that you can use, which basically it's frozen, you put it on your head and it stops the chemotherapy getting to the very sort of little tiny hair follicles. So yeah, that worked quite well. Uh, to me, I think my hair's a little bit thinner, but I don't think you would know. So yeah, I mean, it was more tiredness than anything, weakness. So the thought of actually getting the camera, switching it on and just filming, I just didn't have the energy. I just slept. For a lot of it. One of the downsides of the treatment is the steroids um, which left my face quite sort of puffy. It has gone down a lot now, still there a little bit and obviously it made me put weight on. 
Um, very typical cancer patient look that you see. Um, is of the sickly, sort of thin person. Everybody thinks, oh, you, you know, they think, oh, we'll lose weight, kind of thing. That at least that'll be a bonus. Um, doesn't necessarily happen now. It's actually the opposite because they control things with steroids to make you, um, you know, because you are weak and to keep your appetite, uh, stop you feeling sick, etc. Um, so you maintain your appetite. You eat. Um, you also have comfort eat. The steroids make you hungrier as well. Um, but I'm going to be talking about all that in another video, I think. I just want to concentrate on uh, the results on this one. But yeah, um, I have got a little bit of weight to lose now because obviously I haven't been exercising and, uh, you know, slept a lot. So the weight has crept on. So I've put together the video that I did film to share with you now. So you can see a little bit of my journey and uh, my road to recovery. So it's Monday the 4th of November and um, today then I've been to meet my oncologist just to have a chat about um, the chemotherapy that I'll be being given, the um, pros and cons and side effects, that kind of thing. Um, have my blood taken again. Um, so basically just waiting for a date now, although there is some discussion to be had on one of the um, drugs that they're going to be using. Last time um, when I had chemotherapy, I was given, um, well, it's FEC for short, F-E-C. Don't ask me the full names of them because I can't remember anymore. But they can't give me the same chemotherapy. Um, I mean, basically, it's come back anyway. Um, but the... I think it's the E drug in the fact that they can't give me again um, because they say that my heart probably wouldn't take it again, particularly in that short space of time, the three years. Um, so they've got to give me a different regime this time. Um, so I know that one of them definitely will be doxotaxel um, that I'll be given. So they basically give you printouts to tell you all about the side effects, um, hot flushes, skin rashes. Itching, shivering, being dizzy, headache, being breathless, swelling of your face or lips. Oh, lips, lips is okay. <laughs> um, pain in your back, tummy or chest. Um, they do monitor you for side effects whilst they're giving it you anyway. With all chemo, it reduces your um, white blood cells that fight infection. So you have to be really careful of infection as well. Um, you can't sort of wrap yourself up for five months, however it's going to be. Um, but it's just about avoiding people with colds and things. Um, so every day you have to monitor your temperature. Um, and if it goes above 37.5, then you have to um, basically contact the hospital and go in to be assessed. It can also make you anemic, feel sick. Tired, loss of appetite, sore mouth, nail changes, eye problems, muscle or joint pain, changes in taste, effects on the lungs, build with fluid, sore hands, yeah, the, uh, the list goes on. But they have to give you all of the side effects, don't they? It doesn't mean that you're going to get them. So, um, you know, they've said go in with an open mind and, you know, they do give you tablets to counteract the side effects. So I'll get anti-sickness tablets. Um, I've also started on steroids, had to start those today. So they do everything they can to try and combat the side effects, but um, some are inevitable, particularly when you come off the um, steroids, which will be Monday after the treatment, I think, then um, that's when the tiredness hits you. So yeah, anyway, definitely having Dr. Taxel, but there is some discussion between cyclophosphamide psycho and carboplatin. Cyclophosphamide is the one that they want to give me. 
However, there is a discussion to be had about carboplatin. Um, carboplatin, as I understand it, hasn't been around as long. They haven't been using it as long as cyclophosphamide. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, so the longer term effects aren't particularly documented, um, but it is having good results. And I'm borderline triple negative, which is showing success in treating. So they are going to have a discussion between the consultants and decide which of those two I'm going to have. Um, it is going to be a hard regime. Um, yeah, not looking forward to it, but think positive and we will get through it one way or another. So, yeah, they're going to have a chat at their meeting and they're going to ring and let me know uh, what their decision is. I'm also chasing up a um, something called a BRCA test, I think it is, which is like a gene test, uh, because you can have a rogue gene that can make you more susceptible to breast cancer. Um, there isn't anybody else in my family that's had it, um, that I'm aware of, certainly nobody immediate. Um, so with the results of this test, it could steer them towards the carboplatin. But I don't know how far they've got with the test. I've given them all the information of family and things. Um, but it could take a few weeks. So yeah, they're chasing that up as well. So it's now Wednesday. I chased up my breast care nurse this morning and um, she rang back um, to say that um, they're not going to be following up the BRCA test um, because I don't meet the criteria. You know, you would think having cancer twice in the space of three years might, you know, put you in the criteria, but clearly not. Um, basically because I've got no immediate relative that's had breast cancer. I'm not under 35 or over 60, I think it was. And there were a couple of other things as well. Um, so yeah, I don't meet the criteria, so they're not going to be doing that test. Um, so yeah, I'm just waiting now for my oncologist consultant to ring back to see what they've decided in their meeting. Okay, so my oncologist has rung. Um, they have had a meeting of five consultants regarding which drug I'm given the cyclophosphamide and the carboplatin, it was 3-2. Um, 3 for the cyclophosphamide, 2 for the carboplatin. Didn't really tell me what they based it on. I know the against is because, um, you know, they don't, there's the unknown, that they've not been using it as long. And... There are, you know, there can be quite serious side effects. If you read into the side effects, you know, it's quite scary, really. But you're going to get those with all chemo drugs. One of the main ones is that chemo can actually even cause other cancers, you know. But I've got to have it because... It had travelled to my lymph node, so you know what a position to be in, really. Um, so yeah, the argument for giving it me is because I am um borderline triple negative and I'm having chemo anyway. Um, so what they basically said was, It's up to you, um, if you want carboplatin, we'll give it you. Now, I've looked into it, um, my ex-husband 
has looked into it, which might sound weird. Actually, my ex-husband and his girlfriend went to my appointment with me, with my oncologist. Strange old world, isn't it? Uh, but the reason for that is because we were together when I went through it the first time and he did lots of research then. And he takes all that kind of thing in. Um, you know, when it's yourself and you're trying to read it, you, it can get a bit hard because you, you kind of panic sometimes sets in and you're trying to learn and um, you just read so much information that you almost feel like you're drowning in it but he's good at that kind of thing um so he's looked at the pros and cons and he thought before the consortium had even said anything that carboplatin would be a good option so i have gone with carboplatin um it's one of those isn't it you'll never know whether it was the right or wrong decision, I suppose, because you might not have it, and, you know, what if it comes back again? Might have it, and it might cause something else, it might be a really tough regime that I'm, you know, saying I hate you um, in a couple of months' time. Um, but I just think, oh, what do you do? You know? So, yeah, just um, just waiting now for my date for chemo. Um, so I've had the blood tests, um, got my steroids, got to take those. Um, so, yeah, it's just a waiting game now. It kind of feels a bit strange because everything happened so quick once I was in the system. Um, and then it feels like it's come to a bit of a halt, and because I'm actually feeling okay, you know, like, it just makes it harder that they've taken it out, but it could still be in the lymph nodes. Nobody knows, there could be those rogue cells traveling around the body waiting to take off again. Um, so yeah, that's why I've got to have it, and the fact that it's gonna make you ill when you're actually feeling okay. Um, it's a bit of a bastard, isn't it? But <sighs> welcome to my life. So it's Saturday the ninth, and um, I'm actually <laughs> I am dressed, but I'm. Um, hiding under the covers in my bed because I'm so cold. Um, so basically today I woke up to a text from the hospital saying, if you can hear something sign, that's not me, that's the dog by the way. He's um, There he is. They say dogs are really perceptive and I think he is because he seems to know when something's wrong and he he's like my little shadow at the minute um so yeah which is nice it's really nice actually um so yeah I have woke up to a text from the hospital um saying reminder to attend your appointment at the chemotherapy unit on Tuesday at 10 like first I know about any appointment at the chemotherapy unit on Tuesday um so I've tried to ring and obviously they're not there. Um, went out, came back and then realised that there was another page to the letter. Um, which had been stuck together. So I looked at the other page of the letter and it's not actually to have treatment. It's to watch the bloody video again. I watched the video last time I had chemo. And basically what it is, well, it's not just a video to be fair, but what they do is they get you in a group and you have to watch this video about chemotherapy, um, saying how it's done, what the side effects are, um, what to expect, um, all sorts really like that. Uh, and then you have like a one-to-one -one with a nurse to um, 
you know, if you've got any questions, you can speak to the nurse, that kind of thing. Uh, they'll tell you what to expect. You get your parking permit. Yay, free hospital parking. At least there's something out of it. Um, so, yeah, I've got that on Tuesday. Um, and it says your chemotherapy will aim to be started within two weeks. So it's coming up, but I still don't know when. Um, it's kind of, I don't know, it's weird. It's, you know, you don't want it, but you know you've got to have it. So you almost want it to start. Um, but you don't want it. But you know it's going to happen. Um, and I think just the stress of knowing that I've got to have it is making me really tired. Um, I seem to spend a lot of time sleeping at the moment. Um, yeah, basically sleeping and eating biscuits is my life. Um, so, yeah, back at the hospital on Tuesday. And uh, then uh, I think they will actually give me my appointment on Tuesday as to when I go back and start treatment. So... I will check in again Tuesday and uh, let you know. Okay, so I thought my next visit to the hospital would be for treatment, but um, I had to um, go to the um, meet the nurse, see the chemo department again, which wasn't totally pointless. Um, although when I got there, they did say, oh, you know, if you've been before, we could have done this over the phone. <laughs> Smile. Um, but yeah, basically what happens is you go to the ward where you'll be having, well, I'll be having the chemo. Um, they take your blood again to check it. Um, made quite a neat job of it this time. Um, I've got little veins, apparently. Um... Which somebody told me, well, one of the nurses that took my blood told me is what the royals have. Um, and that's where, because the, they're, they're, they're smaller and close to the surface, and that's where the term blue blood comes from. Don't know how true that is. Or whether I'd like to be related to a royal at this moment in time. Um, money would be good. But yeah, anyway, so. Um, I had blood taken, um, then we have to go and watch a slideshow, um, which I saw last time, all about how they give you chemo, um, what to expect in terms of side effects and things, um, how long you'll be there, what to do if there are any problems when you're at home. Um, so we had that, then you have a one-to-one -one with the nurse where they go through your individual treatment, because there are all sorts of different chemos, as we've kind of touched upon before. Um, and you know you can ask questions if you've got any um and very importantly you get your parking permit um the only unfortunate thing is um although it does get you free parking at the hospital when you go for your treatment that um the parking at the hospital is terrible you have to go early um basically to get a space and so obviously everybody does that and it makes it worse um so you can be driving round and round for ages looking for a space so it doesn't guarantee you a space basically but when you do get one it's free it's free treatment so i sorted that out um yeah and then oh and also importantly i got my date for treatment um which is 22nd of november for my first one so, yeah, at least I can kind of, um, you know, start to work around that, I guess, in terms of doing things, getting things done. Um, I've just noticed my necklace makes it look like I've got a bit of a cleavage there. If you, you know, the picture's not very good, but there you go. There are worse things. Um, so, yeah, um, that's it, I guess, until the 22nd. So um, it's the day of my first treatment. 
it's nine o'clock in the morning and my appointment's at 10 45 or I'm awake and ready and the reason for that is I have not slept at all all night I think it must be a combination of the steroids and probably a little bit of apprehension about the day um but yeah just could not get to sleep I was tired um but my mind was just active if you know what I mean I was laying there thinking of things I've got to do and things like that um so yeah I'm still I'm still tired but I don't think if I closed my eyes now I would go to sleep um in all honesty but um but yeah so it's going to be a long day um but yeah a little bit nervous now I know I've done it before but you know it's just knowing the whole process is starting again so um yeah here we go Here is this is what I'm going to be having. So I'm in the chair, waiting. Brother's here, <laughs> doing his concerned face. He's only here for the biscuits, really. <laughs> so they put these on to basically warm up the veins in the hands. Um, nice little Harry Potter bag there. So it's the morning um, after the second round of chemo. So the sunshine's shining on me there. Um, just checking in to um, say how I'm getting on. Actually feeling okay. Sorry if, if I look a bit rough. It's just that I've got no makeup on because I stayed in bed basically just to rest up. Um, but yeah, all went okay. Um, no um, reactions when the chemo was going in. Um, felt fine last night. I woke up this morning feeling a little bit queasy. Um, but had a anti-sickness tablet and that seems to be okay uh, and I'm actually feeling quite awake <laughs> surprisingly um, you know and you're like thinking out oh, rest but then you're like your mind's going you think oh actually no maybe I could get up and do that so I think I am gonna get dressed and have a pot around um, yeah so fingers crossed okay so far So um, I've been home about an hour now from chemo and um, I'm just so tired. Um, you can probably tell from the way I look that I just haven't been bothered to really do anything to, to jump on here. But, um, but yeah, my hair's frizzy from where the cold cap has been on and obviously face is a bit blotchy probably from the meds um, and I'm just really really tired um, I didn't sleep at all last night uh, thanks to the steroids um, and I find that by so on the second um, drug is going in I just start to get really sort of really down and emotional it must be an effect it's having or I think you've got time to sit there and you're kind of knowing how you're going to be feeling in a day or so. Um, in a day or so that you're going to be completely wiped out and, and a week's gone by um, before you're actually feeling anywhere near human again. And, um, yeah, it's hard because you want to be yourself. And I guess I do post quite 
positive stuff on social media because I don't want people to be frightened of chemotherapy. Um, but it is hard. I'm not going to lie. And as it builds up in your body, it gets harder. And right now, yeah, I'm just feeling really down at the prospect, I think, of another week of that. I know people are sort of saying, oh, you know, that's five done now, but it's not done until you're over the, the side effects of that one. It's in you, but it's not done its thing yet. So, yeah, I'm struggling a bit, I think, with um, the way I feel. Maybe I don't show that side enough on social media, but I don't want people... I'm not trying to get people's pity. Um, you just want people to... You know, maybe empathise with you or just show them that you can be strong uh, and you can get through it. And I will get through it, but it, I'm not going to say it's easy. Um, but, yeah, I'll get through it. I'm just so tired. And I think that's probably why I'm a bit emotional tonight as well. Um, I've still got the thing on where they... Um, Put the can is it can you late can you late you that blooming hurt oh really stung today um but yeah it's got to be done i don't fear the chemotherapy um but i just don't like it either i suppose and i just really want to sleep now but I've got things I need to do before, you know, the full effect hits me. Um, but I just, I, I should sleep tonight because I said I didn't sleep at all last night. So at least I will get rested and hopefully feel a bit better all round tomorrow. So it's now over 24 hours since um, chemo and I've pretty much slept through most of it. Um, it's hit me earlier this time. I don't know why. Normally I'm okay on the Saturday but it's just getting harder I think. Um, Yeah, I've been a bit emotional again, which I didn't want to be, but, you know, sometimes you need to talk and there's just, just nobody to talk to, really. Um, so, yeah, it's not been a good day. Um, it's the day that, um, Caroline Flack died as well, which is, it's just shocking, really. You know, to be that low that you feel it's the only way, but, you know, maybe it's the one thing that she felt in control of. Um, you know, she posted that picture a couple of days ago with a dog. You know, nobody knows what's going on in real life. And then I just feel like I'm no better because I posted the pic today on Instagram of me, you know, watching a film, saying it was treating her after Valentine's. I didn't take that today. I took that a couple of days ago because I knew... That I was going to be ill today, or well, not up to certainly taking a picture like that, and I just didn't want to show weakness. I guess I wanted to show people that I was okay when really I'm not okay. And what I need more than anything is is somebody to talk to. But when you, you know, people don't want to see that. They they don't want to see you looking. Like I look now in an Instagram post. 
So you hide it, you hide the truth and I guess you're not helping yourself but you know people don't want to know. They don't want to know until it's too late sometimes. But it is hard feeling like you can't take any more. This is really weird because um, I'm out the house and I had a call this morning, basically that's the reason I'm out the house, to say um, that I've got my operation tomorrow, which I didn't think it'd be this soon because it was the 9th of April so they brought it forward, um, but I've got to go to the Queen's Medical Centre uh, today to have a chest x-ray to check for COVID-19 just to make sure I haven't got any signs of it before uh, they operate, so that's where I'm going now. Um, the roads are pretty quiet, perhaps not as quiet as I'd have thought. This would normally be like a really busy main road. But you see there's just nothing really. The odd van or car. It really is like 28 days later almost. And it's quiet. I mean, I'm only going for an x-ray, but I feel quite nervous. Just the whole thing makes me feel nervous, I think, the way things are. Okay. Well, that was a strange experience, but quick. Um, I should take this off now. I was going to say it's nice to get some fresh air, but I'm absolutely boiling with the sun. Um, surprising, actually, how many people weren't wearing masks in there. Um, staff weren't wearing masks, uh, it seems to be more visitors, but, uh, but yes, yeah, so I've had the x-ray done, um, my consultant will see the results this afternoon, I think, and if everything's clear, then it's go ahead for the operation tomorrow. Um, yeah, hospital was very quiet, straight in for x-ray, straight out, no waiting, so yeah, it's all very real now but I suppose the sooner they get it done I was going to say the sooner things can get back to normal but obviously with the uh, Covid who knows when that will be but hopefully this will get done and it'll be okay and then I can have the radiotherapy and then maybe I'll be getting back to normal with everybody else who knows um so yeah um that's that done I'm gonna go home get my bag ready for tomorrow, try and, try and relax, if that's possible, um, yeah. Strange. So my operation was moved from City Hospital to the Park Hospital, which is a private hospital, um, basically to keep COVID patients and cancer patients separate. So I was given a private room which was nice, TV and everything and bathroom to myself. This is when I was cannulated ready for the operation. Um, just a picture of my bed there. <laughs> Uh, this is how I was left with the tube coming out of my side to drain the uh, the area where the operation was. So I had to have that attached to me uh, for a couple of weeks. Early morning coffee there because I couldn't sleep. <laughs> uh, breakfast, breakfast in bed. Look at that lunch in bed. Can't go wrong. Uh, those are the bruises that I was left with from uh, the needles. The good news then is that um, picking up from where I left off on the last video, 
the lymph nodes that they removed, they removed all the lymph nodes in the area under my armpit, um, on this side, the affected side, and they were all clear. There was no signs of disease either being killed by the chemo um, or active, thank God, because that would have been, that was my worry that the chemo hadn't worked and you know they were still alive and then I, I, I nobody would really give me a straight answer as to what they would do then and obviously if they had found some there that were scar you know the scarring to say there had been some there or if there were still live ones there then there was also the chance that it could have traveled elsewhere in my body and be trying to grow somewhere else the lymph nodes that they took out thankfully were all clear so, so as I say, there was no signs of the disease and yeah that was a massive massive relief so I'm now waiting for radiotherapy um, that is the next step I'm still going to have radiotherapy just to mop up any stray cells that might be lurking um, I'm not entirely sure how big an area they are doing uh, the plan was I think from here and down the chest area there but um my radio did they call them radiologists uh but radiotherapy can um radiotherapy oncologist was what my previous oncologist um called it they are calling me not this week but next week um to have a chat with me ordinarily we'd go to the hospital but with the coronavirus trying to uh, cut down on the amount of hospital visits um, but I will then have to go in for radiotherapy I don't know how many times the I the plan was 15 but I think what they've been doing with some patients is giving them stronger doses and fewer visits so I will be checked um, obviously in a year's time once the treatment is finished touch wood that nothing has come back I did ask them what the chances are. Again, they said they were small, but they said that last time, so I'm taking nothing for granted. Life is for living, you know, uh, make the most of it. It's not a rehearsal, as they all say, and it, it's true. Moving forward, I, um, I have to have monthly injections. Uh, this is like hormonal treatment because my cancer was hormone receptive. They want to control the hormones um, to stop them producing whatever estrogen is up. So yeah, hopefully now the worst is over and I can concentrate on uh, getting well again. So thank you so, so much for watching. Hopefully you will join me on the rest of my journey to recovery. I'm feeling much, much better now and hopefully getting back on track. Um, typically, obviously, COVID came along and so the holidays and things I was hoping to get at the end of it haven't materialised but you know it's not the end of the world I'm alive and got a future to, to plan you know um, so yeah if you want to join me on the rest of the journey make sure you are subscribed to my channel um, hit that little notification bell so uh, you are alerted each time a new video is uploaded and I will see you in the next one thanks for watching take care bye